coin is here in their natural habitat that we find the common blue scrub. But why do blue and green so dominate the plumage of the medical professional? I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Now, contrary to whatever you may have heard, I don't actually spend my time hanging around men's changing rooms. I've come to explain why scrubs are normally blue or green. I know there are some variations on the theme, but these are fairly recent developments since scrubs have been adopted as a sort of uniform in all sorts of environments. But their original home and where they derive their name is because they come from a scrubbed or sterile environment. So to understand why they are the color they are, one needs to come here to the operating theaters and maybe take a trip back in time. At the start of the 20th century, doctors routinely operated in their own clothes, and indeed, a bloody apron was the reassuring sign of a good surgeon. But the growing influence of Joseph Lister's revolutionary antiseptic teaching, and precisely 100 years ago, the catastrophic 1918 Spanish flu pandemic made even cynics pay attention to a sepsis. A bit of bonus trivia about the Spanish flu, which is thought to have killed 50 to 100 million people, or 3 to 5 percent of the world's population, is that it's not actually Spanish. The H1N1 pandemic uh, possibly started in Kansas in America. It is disputed, some say Asia, um, but the one place it definitely didn't start was Spain. However, because the Great War was still ongoing, there were media blackouts in America, the UK, Germany, all of which were affected, uh, whereas in Spain the press were free to report. And as such, the rest of the world uh, thought that Spain was the first country affected. Operating theatres went from giant petri dishes to wanting to convey the pinnacle of cleanliness and what says clean better than pure brilliant white. Surgical drapes, gowns and the clothing of operating theatre staff became a monochrome affair. Now, an obvious problem with white springs to mind. Remember in those days, operating theatre linens were reusable and uh, it's very difficult to get bloodstains out of white sheets. Believe me, I know. <coughs> what? And as any skier will tell you, the combination of dazzling lights and white can lead to snow blindness. So you might then ask, why not make all sheets red? That would disguise the bloodstains and you could get a few more uses out of them. Actually, it's for the same reason they're not white. And it involves a nifty bit of optical science. Here comes the science bit. Concentrate. Consider what color a surgeon spends his or her time looking at. It's the blood red of a surgical field. Our eyes detect color using three types of cone cell, red, green, and blue. Each cone relies on a specific pigment. As long as we look at a mixture of colors, the cones have a chance to synthesize each pigment, but if you stare at one color for a prolonged period of time, the corresponding cone's pigment becomes depleted and you temporarily can't see that color as well. However, your other cones continue to work normally and this is how ghost images are created. You've probably tried this before, but you can pause the video, stare at this circle for 30 seconds and then look at a white background. White is of course a combination of all three colors and you will see this. Therefore, having blue or green around the red surgical field allows the red cones a chance to recharge. You can reduce the chance of red fatigue as well as minimize ghost images. If you have developed acute eye strain from watching this video, then allow your cones to recover by clicking like, subscribing, and perhaps watching a few other videos. Although please be warned that two of my videos did cause sudden and irreversible blindness and what one viewer described as the feeling of impending doom. <laughs>